cool. All right, everybody, welcome back to R44's YouTube channel. Today, we are in the factory that makes the SK1, the SP1, and loads of other products out of carbon fiber. So I thought it's time to show you guys a little bit more in depth on how they're made, what kind of goes into them. Because a lot of people just think they just come out of a machine and voila, they're ready to go and they're shipped. But a lot of hours actually go into making a product um, and it can go wrong very quickly. And there's a lot of processes that go along and that's why they cost a lot of money and loads of other things. But let's talk about them. We are in the UK. We're in an area called Banbury Silverstone area. Um, this is kind of the motorsports district here in the UK. And that's where a lot of carbon composites are made and things like that. With Mike, Mike is the genius that makes every sp1 and sk1 um and we've got the mold so this is the top isn't it yeah. top of the mold um and he's laying up the kind of first sheet this is the aesthetic sheet so this is what you see from the upside um and it looks you know it matches oem so going through the material um it's a pre-preg material so it's very sticky at the moment it, this is the material that's got to be kept in a fridge or a kind of temperature temperature controlled environment to make sure um, it doesn't go too sticky um, as you can see if you change the shape of it it stays in it it's got resin inside the cloth it's not like a um, kind of wet lay product where if you kind of pull the strand or open up we'll show that to you in a moment um, but it's all infused with the resin already um, we'll talk through the processes but yeah it's ready to go this would be then lifted in I'll lay it up so it's lifted into the mold. As you can see, this is one sheet, Michael, is it? Yeah, From all the way across, um, it's one sheet. And then you have, we've got these like two little um, details on the SP1 that we'll show you later when we go upstairs in the trimming area, where we have like the fin that goes into the twin fin ducts. And we'll show you over there on how he's trimmed them and how to get the, the weave lined up. Um, but again, yes, yeah, so the pre-preg kind of production. This is the top of the mold. There's a bottom of the mold in a minute, but we'll just show, let Michael just crack on. And what he'll do is just show you briefly how he pushes it in, because it is quite a process to get it all pushed in nicely to make sure there's no distortion in the weave and little things like that. Do you want to have a little go, Mike? Yeah. While on camera, no pressure. Um, but again, he's just pushing it into all the area, you know, the tight areas in the mold. Look at the precision. Um, but I think the hardest thing is obviously not distorting the weave. Thankfully, it's with the pre-preg, it's got the resin inside it so you can work the material a bit more. Whereas the wet lay products, so the MHC products are a little bit, you'll see a bit more distortion in the weave because of the way, look how he's having to manhandle it. If it was a wet lay product, doing that would probably distort the weave a little bit. Um, but you can start to see the shape of the splitter coming in. Um, and yeah, then we're gonna stop the camera because we're gonna take some photos briefly, but um, we'll look over here. If we bring this over to Dylan, if you have a look here. So this is the, the fin. You can't actually see it on the other side, but we'll show you in the trimming room. But he's pushed in a bit of material and he's matched the weave up. So when you look at the, the kind of indent in the splitter, all the weaves match and he's put a joiner in there. Um, this is like the trimming process, or this is the laying process. Um, he's also gonna back up, Michael, do you have any of the thicker material uh, this is the 600 gram so, so this is 600 gram what's this michael 200. this is 200 grams so this is the same as oem bmw um so it looks so when you have it next to an oem piece it looks the same and this is a 600 gram and this is backed is this is the only backing that we use right yeah just one layer of this Once you get that, I get a bit of this gives it the strength so obviously in kind of aesthetics i call it like fast fashion automotive that we are in we're not going for like heavily strong strong carbon fiber that you need in formula one for example so it all depends on the build up behind the aesthetic layer um so yeah it's backed by 600 gram this is, goes in the same way this goes in and that adds the strength to the splitter um we're actually playing around with two different things at the minute as well is where we put this join line so on the front of the splitter there's a little join which then does the return of the splitter we'll show you briefly this is the bottom side um that michael's already done michael mike he's already had a go at this so he's just laid this up this is a 600 gram backed up to it he will then feed this onto the back and match it up perfectly so the weaves match all the way along he bolts it up and then he bags it so we'll go on to the sk1 which have already been bagged up and going ready to go into the autoclave um but yeah, we'll cut that there. Yeah. All right, so we are now over onto the final bench before it goes into the autoclave. So this is the SK1. Um, this is all bagged up, ready to go. Pressure, uh, the vacuum lines are connected. It's hit um, no air left inside, pretty much. Um, but let's run through. We've got release film. So as it goes in the mold, the mold's then closed up. We then put the release film. This allows it to be released um, from all of this. We've got the breather. 
that goes on next. This allows the air to be sucked out of every area. You see, obviously you've got the breather all the way through, tucked around. This allows the air to go through the breathing film all the way up to these. We've also got a few more layers here that allows it to breathe better. And then the bag. The bag goes all the way around the product. And then the main thing is when this goes in the autoclave, the autoclave is a big chamber of such that's temperature controlled and then it's pressured. So the part is pressurized, the temperature goes up, that makes all the resin in the carbon weave solidifies. Um, it then solidifies all the way through the part under pressure, spread across and it adds the strength. So that's why prepreg has a step up on everything else. Um, like production method wise because you get the strength um, you get temperature resistance as well as everything else and lightweight so less you know less resin we can control the resin because it's the resin's already dispersed in the material and less material because of the strength um, but that's pretty much it in terms of here this then goes into the autoclave but this just kind of shows you obviously michael's been working on that for quite a while then the amount of materials that go into doing this this is a consumable so this is a one-time use so all the breather all the you know the release film the bags are all consumable so they use once and then they're thrown in the bin so that adds on a lot of cost obviously the material the material we then have to pay for like a storage for the uh, material so it needs to be temper controlled and then the cure process is really expensive as well so it obviously uses a lot of electricity to power all the vacuum lines all the temperature of the chamber so that's kind of where the cost of prepeg starts ranking up um, and then the manhandling obviously this is a huge piece so I don't know the weight of this, um, but it's pretty heavy. Let's have a look. I don't think I can lift it up. Pretty heavy, but these are made of carbon fiber. So touching briefly on the molds, we'll come back over there, but all the molds are made of carbon fiber, um, prepared carbon, but just different material that can withstand the heat and the pressure that goes through making the product. Um, you'll see some products are made in aluminum, uh, steel molds, but the way that they're set up here, we can't we don't really have the jacks and stuff to transport all the molds and stuff so we use carbon fiber molds and they've been really good this sp1 mold that's being used at the minute it's been doing a year and a half of production as long as it's maintained clean the surface are really polished uh, before laying the carbon the product comes out perfect every time um but yeah well, i think we'll leave it here we're going to go upstairs next and show you the trimming process so this is after it goes in the autoclave and then gets trimmed so we'll meet you upstairs so right, cool. okay. um all right we are now upstairs in the trim room. This is a controlled environment. It's really dusty. You've got this lovely bay. This sucks dust downwards, um, as easy as it says. Um, it's called an air bench, border. Um, anyways, no, let's have a look. So this is the SP1. This is an SK1. This has been through the autoclave process. Our autoclave is off-site, um, so it's something that we rent, and I think the boys here are looking to get one in-house as soon as possible. But at the minute, it's a really big expense, and we are trying to perfect quality and kind of prepping of the product which is the most important then we just take it around the corner then it goes into a big autoclave so we can do a lot of them at once and then back out do all the trimming finishing then back down to our to london to the paint booth and then it's done and shipped around the world but yeah let's talk so sp1s come out you can see you've got resin coming through from the mold here um so it's quite rough you've got a scribe line there i think don't know if you can catch that. So that is the end of the splitter. So that's what we're going to trim all of the rough pieces to that line. We're going to sand back this front edge, then bring it around, and we're going to sand, bring this back. We've recently revised the design, and we're bringing this return further down here. This will help us improve the quality of this join line. It's not that it's bad now, it's just we always want to evolve. We can't really sit still. We want to make sure that we're bringing things better and better, making them quicker, because that's one thing that we've obviously been requested that we manufacture quicker. So one thing, because if you think about, you know, if we, before we were talking about the release bags, uh, release film and the bagging, we've got to push the release film and the bag and everything, you know, everything else, the breather into this section here. And it's so tight, we would start having issues where, you know, we're creating like air bubbles and things like that. So we're just trying to prevent that, making sure that we can produce them quicker and get them out the door. But yeah, less of that, more of this. Um, so two main tools used here. Um, this kind of like sanding pad is used to take any edges off. So this back face here along all the front. So I've just done a bit here a minute ago just to kind of show you. So that's how it started. And that's once you use the tool. And then we use this trimming tool and then we trim it all along that back edge there. Get a nice clean line all the way around. Um, and the same with the SK1. Um, SK1, we've got all the holes kind of scribed in there and then we drill those with a drill before it goes into paint 
um, and then just sand that down, cut that line back there. It's pretty simple stuff, but it does take a lot of time and a lot of mess, um, and we've got to get it perfect. We hand do it as well, um, so we just follow that scribe line all the way along. Um, so yeah, we're going to get these two done. I'm going to show you guys how it's, do how it's done, and then the next step is taking these back down to London, where we take care of all the spraying, and we are going to clear lacquer them in 3K lacquer and get a mirror finish um, on them. Then it goes from the paint to the QC bay in London, and then from the QC to the prep room, and then the prep room into a box, and then off around the world. But yeah, let's throw this tools into action and get trimming. <laughs> So we are at our paint shop and we've got two SP1s right here um, going into paint. So we're going to show you kind of the process. So let's go over to this one. This has come out, so it's done the trimming process. You know how we left some bits hanging out and a little bit. Some of the resin that kind of gets compressed out was hanging out. So what we do here in the paint shop, we then sand it all back down to make it really smooth and picture perfect. Any pinholes, we fill them up with a bit more resin and then just finish them up. So this is a raw splitter ready for the first coat. Behind us, if you want to go here, Dylan, let's go here. This has had one coat, so each splitter gets two coats because we want the lacquer finish to be really, really like a mirror finish. You see it's very hard. If you look down some carbon, it's like wavy. What we want to do is try and get the best mirror image um, because we want to make sure that when you open your, your um, parcel, you look at it and you go, wow, that obviously is nice. So this is going for the second coat. This is going for the first hit. So what I'm going to do is get our authenticity sticker because obviously, as we all know with everything, everything gets copied nowadays. Um, so what we do is we hit it with one coat first, then we put all to the authenticity sticker. And this goes on this side. I've been instructed by the paint shop that it's two mil from this fixing. Goes in like so. And then that uh, shows authenticity of the product. That's lacquered over. And then we have another sticker that goes on there, and that is the quality check sticker, which means it's been quality checked and it's been signed off. And that happens after it's been taped and prepared, ready to be packaged and shipped. That way we know that if it's in the transport from here, because the MHC's like warehouse is not far from here. Um, so it's got to be transported from here to there, and then from there to R44 Performance. So yeah, that's cool. So now we are going to get Arto to come in and hit this with the first layer of lacquer. Um, and we pretty much use 3K lacquer, the same stuff as on like a body panel of stuff, um, just mixed up to work correctly with carbon. Uh, but the main thing is when you get stone chips and stuff like that, some carbon, it would just shatter. We want to make sure it just blisters like a paint chip would be. Um, that way you can touch it in and things like that. So yeah, let's let the boys get geared up, ready to spray and watch it spray. QC. So behind us, we've got some other bits over there. So we have a dirty QC, a clean QC, and this is actually our packing bay, but it's a little bit cleaner. So let's walk through. Um, we've now got the FP1 that's been sprayed, um, and this is the final process, the final quality control for its package, put in the warehouse, and then fulfilled out to you lovely customers. So I'm just going to walk through exactly what we do. Um, so first of all, I get a new microfiber, um, some adhesive like remover. This is like a panel wipe as well and I go across all the surfaces and give it a good clean up all the way across and I'm looking for any 
distortion in the weave, uh, which mostly any issues are resolved in the paint because when we put the first lacquer, actually before we before they leave the factory, we put acetone over them and it gives it the same effect as that lacquer would be on it. So you could see any distortion and any issues. Um, but yeah, let's wipe this over. I'm gonna have a once over, and this is where I look kind of primarily for defects from paint. So that is um, runs in the paint or anything like that. And there we go, so that's looking good. Overall, it's a perfect quality piece. Um, we'll just clean that up. So straight in, we have that. I would go around and um, check some key things. We do this every little while just to make sure that factory's doing everything correct. So 7.5 mil holes all the way across. And check that over. So that looks good. We then are gonna go on to taping the splitter. So obviously you've got fixing points along the back we have this space ahead in the front. So we put some uh, like 3M tape. This is a special UK manufactured tape that we know the rating of the tape and the quality of it. So we start by taping this side of it, get it nice and square, cut it along this edge, like so. That's that, and then we'll cut the back and then we're gonna run it along the front. Just put that on the side. We'll do this side first. And this is, the main thing is when the customer installs this, uh, we provide like a uh, panel wiper as well. So similar to what that is, um, but in a, in a little wipe. So you can just wipe down the front bumper. We recommend remove any kind of grit and stuff from the road to make sure the adhesive works. I've obviously, uh, picked up an old knife, um, but that's looking good. Then across the top, we'll just run this line all the way along. Like so. So that looks good. So then we'll just push that down. Can Cutting these edges. Cut this one in, and then we are pretty much done on the front. Thankfully, the SP1s don't require much else. So the same thing, the boys over there now are just doing some uh, spoilers. So the spoilers, again, are always applied with this tape. Um, annoyingly, it doesn't have any branding on it, but that's because it's an OEM, OEM, it's an OEM manufacturer rather than um, a brand. Um, but we, we can just know, especially for the spoilers, we need to know that the adhesion levels um, after 12 hours, after an hour, are um, a certain amount um, to make sure that spoilers don't come flying off. And these can be applied in kind of lower temperatures, but if you are installing them, put some heat on the panels um, just to make sure the adhesive's working. Um, and then over here, Do the last bit. So these are the last bits of the, the taping. Um, as you can see, uh, for this product in particular, we put a little bit on the back edge because the last fixing's there. So we need something just to make sure that's tucked up at all times. Um, and we don't want to use any self tappers on the front end. That's pretty much the prep. So now we would just go over again, make sure any finger marks are pulled off, that the adhesive's well um, kind of push down um, but one other thing I'm just gonna walk through is something that we do quite a lot is um, every couple batches we test the lacquer finish so this is a special tool um, if I open this up, I'm not gonna do it because this is a production splitter so this will be on someone's car very soon but you can see here this is sharp edges what we would do is cut a kind of a slash a hex of such um, a grid so you cut that into the lacquer this is set at a certain depth um, to make sure this meets OEM manufacturing. So we've got some data from the likes of Bentley and stuff that we kind of meet. You then um, would kind of get the dirt, brush off the dirt, use this special tape that is for this tool. You stick it on, it's really, really sticky. And you pull it off and then any loose, in the grid, it'll be literally like a very small grid. Any um, lacquer that comes off, I mean, it's, it's failed. The, you know, the product hasn't been prepped correctly um, and that will cause flaking. So if you've got stone chip, it would start flaking off if that's shown. Um, and then what we do, we would look at that under micro, micro, mic, I can't even pronounce this. Mic, yeah, anyways, we'll leave that there. But uh, I don't know why. 
Uh, but yeah, we look underneath that and just assess the grids and make sure it's all healthy. Um, so that's something I would do on probably every two to three batches. Um, we would just scrap one splitter, um, alternatively put it back through uh, paint and just double check. So last of all, you get the um, authenticity sticker. This one's been painted over. This one goes on top. This is after it's just about to be packaged. So then we go here, we put that next to that. And this is signed off by the person that's done the QC and the prep of the product. And then it has a batch number so we can kind of track that. Um, and there you go, the SP1 is uh, prepped. And the same kind of process goes for everything. Uh, for example, the diffusers, they don't have any 3M tape, so they just be cleaned over. Um, and then we would check some, some of the clip dimensions, uh, the build up, so make sure they clip in. And we do that every other little batch because we're quite consistent because they come from the type of mold. But if they were manufactured different, they may differ, but they're normally pretty consistent. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, it's quite cool to show you guys around. We've got a lot more of this coming. Um, MHC will have its own channel. Um, the boys at MHC and the girls at MHC are working on that. They're working for a really cool launch in uh, March. They are relaunching the website and everything like that. So some cool stuff. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything from manufacturing of all carbon parts made by MHC+.